ultimate speech, and a speech that I am under lots of information that Jordan has had lots of sleepless nights over. Um, so much as so that she presented me with this book, going, your best man speech has to be generous, it has to be kind, it has to be complimenting. I don't read this book in front of her, and it says the exact opposite. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, Daniel has spent his entire life carefully story-proofing this speech. He has been incredibly careful to not create any stories that I could possibly bring up in the speech. <laughs> he has never done anything as stupid as, say, miss an exam. Or, or write off more cars than either set of my grandparents have owned. <laughs> <laughs> he has never worn more dresses than I have strands of facial hair. <laughs> he has never done anything as stupid as say, crack his head open on a door oven, or a tree, or a swimming pool, or a door frame, twice. <laughs> and he has never broken his arm while cycling on a skateboard park. <laughs> So don't worry, Jordan, there are clearly no stories to bring up in this speech. <laughs> so the book says that you have to introduce yourself and tell some embarrassing, funny story about how the groom asked you to be a best man. So, quite frankly, if you don't know who I am, you don't know Daniel very well. <laughs> um, and he didn't ask me to be a best man. Uh, we never had this conversation. This was just something that came up in passing as, oh yeah, by the way, you're best man. I then hear Jordan say over the phone, you told me you asked him four weeks, months ago. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know who I am, I, I'm Daniel's slightly older brother. Um, but if you ask any of my elderly relatives, they would tell you that me and Daniel have been joined at the hip since we were very, very small. My mum will be more than happy to tell you stories of Daniel translating my twin speak. But when she stops to said, please find an excuse to leave the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the truth is not far away from the reality. Uh, me and da uh, uh, Daniel have been very close since we were very small. But this has not meant that we have always seen eye to eye. My mum has told me this, this story many, many times. So my sister Sean was very, very small. And she, we were in Tesco's, I believe. And she threw up in the parsnips. <laughs> uh, uh, or watermelons or whatever. Someone tells you that that fruit or vegetable was. I've heard about four different versions. <laughs> uh, Mum turns to me and goes, uh, what shall we do? I go, we shall tell, tell the man. Not liking this answer, she turns to my brother. And cheekily, in that grin that everyone in this room knows, he grabs her hand and goes, we should do a runner. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, now, no speech about Daniel would be complete without talking about his beloved Liverpool. Um, if Jordan doesn't know that her house is going to be consumed by Liverpool memorabilia, I don't know what she's been doing for the last four years. <laughs> Trust me, there are going to be more of those Liverpool garden gnomes. <laughs> but don't worry, if Liverpool get relegated, he will find a new team. Please ask my Uncle Keith for stories of taking him to watch Portsmouth in the FA Cup. A charity shield final. <laughs> now, me and Daniel have never agreed on anything when it comes to football. Uh, I don't think ever. Um, and most of these arguments take place when playing FIFA. <laughs> now, now, any of those who know Daniel during college, his primary A level 
was advanced FIFA studies. <laughs> However, despite this, he only managed to see minus. Please ask John T. Shaw yeah. or David Cullett for proof of Daniel's inadequacies as a FIFA player. Yeah, you suck, but okay. Now, <laughs> now talking about the groomsmen, uh, the book uh, that I will reference uh, says that I need to thank the groomsmen and compliment the bridesmaids. The second part is easy, apart from Charles. <laughs> that, that is because she is incredibly bad at taking compliments, but loves hugs. She loves hugs. Feel more than happy to give her a hug. However, thanking the groomsmen is very difficult because I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be thanking them for. <laughs> <laughs> but then I sat uh, in my living room with uh, David two days ago, and we were talking about Daniel. And the way he talked about Daniel was exactly the way I think about him. Um, and that proved to me that he has found some pretty cool friends. So I would like to thank the groomsmen, particularly my sister. Now, as joined at the hip as we were, there was always one aspect of Daniel's life that I could not keep track of. And this was the girls. <laughs> <laughs> girls came and went like buses. Sometimes you wouldn't even know one had gone. <laughs> however, however, how did I know Jordan was, how did I know Jordan was different? How did I know that this woman was different? He actually told me about her. Aww. I remember sitting on the phone with him, and I will testify, he claimed that you said you were a Liverpool fan. <laughs> and he told me the story of the Lord of the Rings, and I knew then he was infatuated by this woman. <laughs> we have, since we were kids, made jokes about the fact that my dad proposed after six weeks. We then started to make jokes about Daniel proposing. But when me and Dad, uh, with, uh, over the course of his life, but this time, we weren't joking. I remember him talking to me late November and telling me that he was going to propose. And considering that this woman had just spent her time cleaning my dirty university flat, <laughs> Uh, I knew it was a good choice. <laughs> However, I did then come home for Christmas from university and she'd stolen my place at the dinner table. So this was not a good start. <laughs> and I think the reason why I was so nervous about meeting Jordan is I'd never had to share Daniel before. And I'm now prepared to offer 40%. <laughs> Daniel's face when Jordan walked down the aisle this morning and it told me everything I needed to know. Uh, I have, there's no person in this room I know better than Daniel and that face told me everything I need to know. Um, growing up Daniel had a fearless attitude. Um, I'm sure you've seen pictures of him jumping off cliffs into swimming, into lakes, wearing very little clothing. Um, but he's also had this ability to not really care what people think, which growing up I was very jealous of. Uh, I remember going upstairs and he was uh, with his friend giggling as they put on our sister's princess dresses. <laughs> And this was not the last time we wore a dress. Um, I then saw a picture of him and his mate recreating Titanic on London Bridge. I'm sure you have all seen this photo. And I'm sure you all have a photo or a story of him doing something embarrassing or stupid or just not caring. I have heard stories today about him being pushed up the high street in a bar in a shopping trolley. <laughs> but then I looked at those pictures even harder, and I realised that 
For Daniel, it's not about doing stupid things. He never does those stupid things on his own. And a quote from our favourite sitcom that I would like to share is, whatever you do in this life, it is not legendary unless your friends are there to see it. <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. And, Now, uh, no speech would be uh, complete without talking about Daniel's attitude to family. Daniel is, not, Daniel is not a complicated person. You need, to, you need to feed him twice a day. In fact, let him feed himself or he'll moan about your cooking. Um, and you need to water him, beer if he's been good, never red wine, as I'm sure everyone has told you. Um, and once you're bored with him, stick him in front of the telly until he finds something to watch. I have once heard him try and argue the merits of the second division of German football to me, and how it is a compelling spectator sport. Um, sorry. Um, despite all of this, Daniel has one request in life. Don't be a dick. He is an incredibly loyal person. And no one knows this better than me. Um, I'm sure lots of you know when I was very small, uh, I was put in hospital through bullying. I then hear the next day that he has rammed his head into the bully and been sent to the head teacher's office. <laughs> and this sums up Daniel perfectly. Loyal to a fault and a little headstrong. <laughs> Now, I could whittle on about all of Daniel's faults for another 10 minutes, and no one wants that. But what I would like to say is thank you. Daniel is the best person I know, and he is marrying someone incredibly patient who puts up with all of his shit because she knows that having Daniel in your corner is the coolest thing in the world. So, I don't have a glass, but I'd like everyone to raise a glass Jay. to the real best man in the room and the most patient woman in the room. <laughs> to Dan Jordan. And now I would like to introduce my father to do the final speech.